Hi everyone, in this video we will be calculating the gravitational field inside a spherical shell. So spherical shell is a hollow sphere with all of its mass concentrated on its surface. So there is nothing inside to say. So we will start by taking a random point, okay? Uh, any point like something like this and let's calculate the field so the gravitational field is gm upon r square so this, gravi this is the gravitational field produced due to m at some distance r okay just considering the magnitudes we can find out the directions and so first let's see what is actually creating the field at this point it is actually these small mass elements like this dm right right here so it's pulling it's creating a field in this direction so you have right here you have another mass which is creating a field in this direction and now we have to sum over all these all such fields now this might be very complicated but we'll use symmetries and symmetrical arguments to make our calculations very easy okay. so first we'll start off by doing a construction okay something like this so we have divided our shell into four regions okay so this is our first region this is second we call this three let me call this region four okay so if you want to draw it on this ball then it would look something like this this is your first region region number one okay and diametrically opposite to it you have this big region region 4 and this region on top the region on top is region 2 sorry this is region 3 and this one on top is region number 2 this one is region number 4 so the field at this point at this uh, let me call this point p is the field due to the first por portion plus the field due to the second portion this one plus the field due to third portion this big arc plus the field due to the fourth portion this one now if you observe carefully the second portion and the fourth portion are exactly the same okay their mass will be the same and their mass distribution will also be the same since we have assumed that the sphere is uniform so if this part region number two creates a field in this direction upwards then this field the field region 4 will be equal because the mass masses are the same they are basically the same shapes but in the opposite direction so the fields due to the region region 2 and region 4 have to cancel out because they are, have the same magnitude and are in the opposite direction so the sum of these two is 0 so basically we have to find e1 plus e3 so field due to this region plus the field due to this region now let this mass let me call this dm let me call this one d capital m this one is larger than this one so i've used this notation let me call this distance r1 let me call this distance as R3 okay 
now the field due to this dm this small one e1 its magnitude will be g dm upon r1 square and it's in this direction now if your sphere is uniform then it will have a constant surface density or constant mass density okay if m is the total mass then the surface density will be mass density will be total mass upon total area 4 pi r square since all of the mass is outside in, in a spherical region there is nothing inside and if it's uniform this will be the same as a very if you take a very small chunk then the mass density will remain the same therefore we can write sigma as dm by da where this da is the small area made by this mass mass element so from this you can say that dm is sigma times da and just place it down right there we get g d uh, sigma da upon r1 square this is your da let me write this down d as da1 da1 upon r1 square now this quantity is known as the solid angle right so if this it's known as called uh, denoted as omega if this is omega the solid angle is also omega okay and that was the whole point of this construction so that the solid angle so your mass is varying your radius is varying but your solid angle remains the same so you can write this as g sigma omega okay even now similarly for e3 you can do the same procedure okay e3 will be g this d capital m upon r 3 square and then d3 d capital m will be sigma times d a3 okay sigma d a3 divided by r3 square and since these two masses subtain the same solid angle at this point you can also write this g sigma omega now this tells us that e1 and e3 have the same magnitude but in the opposite directions so if this one is uh, e1 e3 will point in some something like this okay and since they are the same magnitudes they are in the opposite direction they, these two will also cancel out which leaves us with nothing so the electric field sorry the gravitational field at any point so since you have chosen a random point it works for all the points inside this hollow sphere or a shell is zero so that's it for today thanks for watching